Hello everyone, my name is Alvin Antino and this is my colleague Kingi Masha. You are watching Science Hub from a favorite channel and Mood TV, the, uh, where, where you watch and learn. Now we will, we will be discussing from from one no, from one physics in chapter three, which is force. Now you force, you may be asking, what is force? Force is a pull or push on an object. You may you may. Force can be experienced in, in many ways. For example, kicking a ball, you lift, lifting, a, lifting, lifting a, 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 a stone, a stone. During construction. Yeah. Yes, and then pushing a wheelbarrow, pushing, pushing a wheelbarrow from one place to another. And during the tug of war, there is also a force which is applied. So you may find out that all these, all these activities involve pushing or pulling. Therefore, a force is a push or a pull. Now, there are, many, there are many types of forces. A force has many as effects on, on objects. For example, a force can change, a st can change the, 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 the direction for, of, an, of the object. It can also slow down a moving object. And it can also make a moving object to start, which was in stationary, to start motion. And this can distort or change the shape of an object. Yes. Uh, then we go to the types of forces. On the, bo on the board, there are many types of forces. For example, this is the gravitational force. Gravitational force, this is a force, this is a force that pull, pulls objects towards the center of the earth. This force, this force varies from one place to another. Varies from one place to another. The, the, the gravitational force at one point or, or, or on earth is different from the gravitational force gravitational force on another planet. And then it is also, you can also say that it is, it is a result of push, it is a, it's a result of attraction between the surface of the earth and the object. And the gravity, the push of the of an object towards the earth is known as weight. Yes. It also Weight also varies. Weight also varies from one place to another, because because the gravitational force also is is varying. Yeah. So when the gravitational force is higher at a place, that means that the area is more nearer to the earth, to the center of the earth. That's when you'll find that the weight the weight is greater. And weight 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 or force has its SI, SI unit as newtons. An SI unit, this is a unit that was agreed upon by, by international scientists in Paris as a unit, as a medium unit which cannot be changed, which cannot be ch changed. Therefore, the SI unit of force, which is newtons, is constant throughout the, throughout, throughout the world. Then we go to the next force, which is tensional force. Tension of tension, it can be described as a result of two opposing forces. That means when you have an object and you pull at the both ends, you pull towards different directions, the objects will try to expand. That means the tension will be applied on the object. Then the tension force, tension force is experienced when a spring when a spring or a string is pulled or compressed at both ends, and then there are types of types of these strings which can which are pulled and which are pulled. There's the stretched there's the stretched spring. There's the free spring. Free spring, and there's the compressed. The, the, the stretch spring is has the stretch spring is longer than the than the compressed spring. It the means compressed. that the force is acted in both ends. That that's why the spring will be stretched. And when you go to the free spring, there is no force acting on either sides, so the the spring will be reluctant and. When we go to the compressed spring, this means that the force is applied on the different 
different dire different directions but face but moving towards the center and in another way we can find the the measure of tension by having a spring and a clamp and a load on it with a meter rule so first we are going to length without the load first then we add the load to the spring and we subtract from the from the first measurement and the second measurement and you are going to find the the tension which was exerted now back here i said the types of springs there's a stretch spring free spring and the compressed spring the, the compressed spring has a very short length. The compressed spring has a very short length since it is compressed, has very short length. And then the strength spring is, is longer than, than, the, than the rest of the spring. And the free spring has a moderate, has a moderate spring, has a moderate length. Now, a length, a spring, or a substance that can be stretched or compressed without breaking is known as an elastic material. And, 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 and an example of such a material is a spring balance. A spring balance which is, which is used to measure force. And also we have the plastic rubbers. They are also elastic and the foam which we, found, we find at the time when we wash our clothes. Yes, and then a compressed Compressed material, a com compressional force now is, is when a, an object has been compressed and this, in, this, reducing, this reduces the length. An example of such a, of such a uh, material is balls and, uh, and, uh, bo and catapult, yeah. yes, which uses the compressional force. Now back, uh, another example of a uh, force is the Upthrust up force. Upthrust force. And it is defined to be the upward force acting on an object when in mass in a fluid. That means a, a fluid consists of both a liquid and a gas. Note that upthrust force does not work an, at, in, a vacuum, in a vacuum. Therefore, the force, the force, the upthrust force in a vacuum is is zero and it is great in a fluid that is a, a gas or a solid D different different liquids have different upthrust force for example oil and oil and water you'll find that when you dip when you dip when you dip uh, ball bearings when you dip the ball bearings into liquid into water and oil you will find that the rate at which the ball bearing reaches reaches the bottom, the bottom reaches down, it flows, flows down into the water is higher than the rate at which the, at which the ball bearing flows down into the, into the oil. See, this is because oil has greater upthrust force than water. Yeah. And we can measure the, the upthrust force by putting the spring balance and the load. First, we're going to measure the load itself without putting the heat in, the, in a liquid medium. So this chart is going to explain how the force is measured. Okay, this is a spring balance which has a load which is without any liquid. It's in a vacuum, that is. Yeah. So, the, the 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 measure of the after upturns in this in this place it's for example it will be 80 kilograms and in this place where we have water in the basin and the object is kept in the water there is an upthrust force which is acting on the object so the upthrust the upthrust you may find that the measurement here will be 75 newtons so that means that the original force was 80 and here it's 75. So you are going to subtract to find the upthrust force which is going to be 5 newtons. That is the amount of upthrust force and this is in water. So when you go to oil, oil has a greater upthrust force. So you'll find that this 
in this area, it, it is going to measure approximately 60. And the original was 80. So you are going to take the original, which was 80 newtons, subtract 60 newtons, you are going to get 80. So 80, uh, you are going to get 20. So 20 is the upthrust force. So, and then you, you realize that the upthrust force in, in all of them, this is water, and this is oil, oil. Yes. oil and water. We find that the upthrust force is higher in oil than in, the, than in water and in the vacuum. Another force, another force is the frictional force. Friction, friction. This is the force. This is the force that acts. This is an opposing force that acts on on two surfaces. For example, when when you place your feet on the ground. Now, between the ground and the feet, between the ground and your feet, there is the frictional force. This frictional force has effects. For example, it it decreases or it prevents movement, or it makes movement easier, yeah. easier or harder, depending on the on on the factors. For example, when you are walking in a slippery ground and you are your shoes have threads, you are going to walk carefully. You are going to walk properly because you are not going to slip. That is because of the friction which is applied on the shoes. Treads, as my, as my colleague has said, a tread is a rough surface that is found, or, or that is found either that is found on tires or at the, at the sole down on the, of the shoe. Now, this is the ways of increasing friction. A friction, friction can be increased by roughening the surface. Yes. Can be yes, can be reduced by roughening the surface. Can be reduced by roughening the first surface or oiling the surface. Or oiling the first surface. It can also be it can be increased by smoothening the surface by smooth, smooth, by sorry by smoothening the surface. That is. For example, we are going to have these two diagrams here. This is an object, and this is the ground. And you're trying to push this object to a this place. And at the second diagram, we are going to have the diagram itself and the ground, but you are going to have you are going to roughen the surface. So between these two, you can say that friction. Where can we say that friction is higher than the other? Friction is is there's a rough surface. Yes. Therefore, the, the movement will be limited. Yes. And there is a smooth, smooth surface, then the movement will be will be more. Yes. So here there is less friction, and here there is more friction. Now, as I was saying, there's ways, ways, this is, a, what, this is one way, there's ways of, ways of increasing friction. Ways of increasing friction. There's one where there's smoothening, smoothening, smoothening the surface. Then there's the, then you can also use ball bearing rollers. Using rollers for easier movement. Those are two ways, two ways that you can they can increase friction. Now, due to time, you can also go to the cohesive and adhesive forces. Cohesive and adhesive force. Cohesive force. This is a force of attraction between molecules of the same kind. And of adhesive force is the force of attraction between two different mole molecules. Now, when you pour water on a glass surface, when you pour water on a glass surface, you'll realize that, that the glass, that water wets the glass surface. This is because water has high adhesive force than cohesive force. Has, the particles are, are spread. Between the water 
and the between the water and the surface this high adhesive force than 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 between than the force between the water mole, water molecules which is which is adhesive force and when you wax this this glass surface when you wax this this glass surface you realize that the water forms balls that the water forms balls on that the water forms balls for example on the top of the for example here is one we have the adhesive force and the cohesive force now here is the glass surface and here is the water here is the glass surface then the glass the waxed surface and then there is the water, droplets of water when the water when you pour water on the glass surface it the it wets the glass but when but when you apply or wax this this, this surface and pour water you, you realize that the water forms droplets forms drops and water collect collect together and form drops this, form droplets this means that the cohesive force in the water is higher than the adhesive force on the glass or yes. wax surface a similar experiment that you can use is using mercury and as a surface mercury when you realize that mercury has high cohesive force than the than the adhesive force when you pour one mercury on the glass surface the the mercury forms ball like ball ball like circular balls yes, yes. ball like circular balls this is because the adhesive, the adhesive force is high adhesive force is low that is and the cohesive force between the what the between the the, the mercury molecules is high to so another experiment that you can see is when you have when you have when you put you have a container a beaker filled with water and the, and you have straws or capillary tubes one filled with water let's say this one filled with water or water and here we have mercury mercury let's say you have two separate they are supposed to be two separate Yes, two. Yeah. Yes. Then you realize the meniscus. The meniscus, meniscus is the, the level of water. The meniscus of water is forms a curve or a conical. Sorry, a conical shape. Okay. At, at, both at the beaker and at the and at the capillary. The straw. Yeah. Yes. And the meniscus of mercury forms a, a concave some, something like, that, like this a concave structure both at the beaker and the capillary tube then another difference you realize that the, that the mini that the that the meniscus of water or the level of water in of water is below the meniscus is below the level of water in the in the beaker in the beaker but the but the meniscus or the level of capillary tube of, of mercury is below the level of water in the in the beaker. That's the you can also find that the water in the beaker rises at a higher point than the mercury. This means that the mercury has a higher cohesive force. That's that's why it brings the it attracts the the layer the layer of mercury. Downwards. But this place, this means that the, this meniscus, meniscus symbolizes that the adhesive force is is very high in the water, and the, it makes the water attract to the glass ends. Now, done in that, you can go to the, to the another another force, magnetic force, magnetic force. This is a force of attraction or repulsion or by a magnet. A magnet has two poles, the north pole and the, and the south pole. You realize that when you try to bring the 
North Pole and the North Pole together, they repel, meaning that they won't come together. It will be difficult. But, but, but when you bring the South Pole and the North Pole together, it will be much easier. They will attract. Therefore, therefore you will conclude that like poles repel while unlike poles attract. An, ex and an example or a, a, a drawing of a magnet. A drawing of a magnet is magnet has this feature north and south. When you try to bring the another magnet, another magnet of north and south, meaning that you're bringing, you are trying to bring the north pole and the north pole together, they will repair. Yes. But when you bring, try to bring the south south pole, the north pole to the south pole, north pole to the south pole, you re realize that they attract. Now, in the in mag in, mag in in magnetic force, there are types of there are two types of magnets, man magnetic materials. There are magnetic materials, there are, non there are magnetic materials and the non-magnetic materials. Magnetic materials, these are materials that can that are able that can be can be attracted by a magnet. While the, while the non-magnetic materials are the materials that can be cannot be attracted by the magnet. So next and lastly we are going to check on the electrostatic force and this you'll find that when you take a ruler and rub it on your hair it is going to attract the papers or you'll find that when you're cleaning a glass with a dry piece of cloth it is going to attract some, some dust that is due to electrostatic force now definition of electrostatic force and an electrostatic the electrostatic force. This is a force of attraction or repulsion due to due to charges. Yeah. A charges can be either ne a positive charge or a, neg or, a, or a negative charge. Now, when you rub, for example, a, ru a ruler, when you rub the ruler to your hair and these pieces of pieces of paper, when you rub the, when you rub the ruler to your hair. And then you try you put place it over the pieces of paper you realize that the the pieces of paper at, are attracted to the to the ruler that means that the two the the two objects have different charges yes and then when you as as uh, and also when you when you're removing your clothes when you're removing a an animal cloth from your body you realize that it produces sparkling sounds meaning that your body during uh, during work as you walked as you are moving about, it, it was being uh, heated, or it was, be, it was acquiring charges from the nylon cloth. Now, as you are moving, removing the cloth, as you moving the cloth, it produces sparkling, sparkling sounds. Now we'll go to the mass and and weight. Mass, the mass is the quantity of matter in a substance, in a substance. While weight, weight is the amount of gravitational force applied on an object on an object now these two uh, have differences have differences for example weight weight is a weight has magnitude and size magnitude magnet has magnitude and direction, direction yes. and direction this Since means that weight is the is the direction of weight is towards the center of the earth that's why we say weight has direction. Now, and and mass has only mag has only magnitude, but has no direction. And you realize, and you realize, you realize that all forces, because weight is a force, all forces are, are have both magnitude and and direction. Force. Are, so weight weight is referred to as a as a vector quantity, while mass is referred to as a as a scalar quantity, a scalar quantity is one that uh, that that one as a quantity that has only the the, mag the magnitude only. While and vector quantity has both magnitude and direction. Now another difference is that weight is being a force is measured using a spring balance, while uh, while the mass is measured using a beam balance. Yeah. Then the SI unit and another difference is the SI unit of force. Of, ma of weight, which is a force, is newtons, while that of mass is kilograms. 
and you can say that all vector quantities obey our rule. As we said, vector quantities have both magnitude and direction. So, in the vector quantities, the rule is that they, are, they can add or subtract. That's the rule. Apart from scalar quantities, they cannot add because they don't have direction. Other, 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 con other examples of, of vector quantity which have, diff which have of scalar quantity which have only magnitude is referred to as uh, an example is, the, is velocity. Yes. Now we thank you for listening viewer and we hope that you have learned and you have learned. We hope that you will continue watching Animo TV and where, where people learn, watch and learn from their sitting room. Sitting room. Thank you and till we, till we meet again, my name is Alvin Otieno from, from my Voices Academy. Thank you. Thank you.